Welcome to WWE Infinity War. I'm Ollie Davis. I punched the microphone. I'm so <laughs> amped just then. I'm joined by Pete Quinnell. Welcome to the WrestleMania 40 slash XL Night 1 Saturday Review. Part 1. <laughs> part 1. No, this is the only... <laughs> I guess it's technically part two because I did my edited review that went true. up about half an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. But no, this is the, after this podcast, <laughs> not going to make any more videos on WrestleMania 40 night one. Saturday. Saturday. Part one. But we will be making more videos tonight, yeah. the live reactions for night two. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Uh, no, to the Wrestle Talk channel. We're on the Wrestle Talk podcast channel mm. right now. And plenty more. Uh, if you haven't already, please press the thumbs up button. Like I said, give us a subscribe. Leave a comment down below with what you thought of this episode of WrestleMania 40. Because there's two episodes. Yep. Start of the series. Part one. <laughs> <laughs> and send in a... Ultra chat. There you go. To wrestletalk.com forward slash support. We'll read out every single one of them. Over five US dollars. And a big thank you to this video's sponsor, wrestlingmasterclass.com. It's the best way to learn how to break into this wonderful industry of professional wrestling from being a wrestler all the way through to one of these guys, a YouTube wrestling star. Uh, the link's in the video description below for that. So check that out. Uh, we'll have more on it later on because, Pete, I've been doing the course. Oh, yeah. I've learned some things. Okay. I've done a worksheet breaking down the Sami Zayn versus Gunther match. That is wild. Ollie Davis has learned a thing. Ollie Davis did some homework on his lunch break. <laughs> that's that's what this is. <laughs> anyway, we are going to start off with the cliffhanger ending to night one. Mm. And I was trying to tell my lady partner mm -hmm. at 8.30 a.m. this morning mm -hmm. after I finished watching this, and she very kindly made me breakfast, how unique this is <laughs> in WrestleMania history. Mm -hmm. I said, it's a cliffhanger. Yeah. We've, we've never had a cliffhanger. And she's like, oh, what, they don't do cliffhangers in wrestling? I said, well, they, do, they actually do cliffhangers all the time. Like, that's how <laughs> weekly TV is structured. That's how TV works, yeah. <laughs> but that's never been one at WrestleMania. And she's like, oh, well, is it? But it's always two days, isn't it? I said, no, only for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it's always been, here's the night one main event, here's the night two main event. Yeah. It was kind of connected last year, but not fully. So we have both nights main evented by the same story, and we ended this one, which is the Roman Reigns Rock versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins tag match, with the worst possible timeline. Yeah. Because the bloodline one yeah. and the commentators were really putting over through this whole match that if the bloodline win this match cody's screwed mm. cody's got no chance of winning because it's bloodline rules tomorrow and there's no way that he's gonna win so they're really hammering it home that cody's definitely winning right <laughs> right come on like he's gotta there's um, a few things when he handed his weight belt to his uh, family mm -hmm. member who is struggling with cancer right now when he mm -hmm. came out. I thought, well, I do hope he wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty baby face move right there. Yep, because if he doesn't, mm, I'm going to have some thoughts. And I'm on the podcast review tomorrow. I'll have lots of loud thoughts. I really hope he doesn't win. Yeah. Just for the chaos. Yeah. I, it would be... I don't know what it would be. But I think it might be one of the worst things I've ever seen in wrestling. Didn't you say that last year? I did. And this would be worse. <laughs> <laughs> because that that loss last year is only marginally salvaged by Cody winning this year. And if he doesn't, that makes that one even worse in retrospect. But when he wins it on the third time, from, <laughs> from The Rock. Of course. Yeah. Because The Rock is he's the, the main star. He's here. the final boss, as you say. He actually, yeah, he's been yeah, saying that quite, is, quite blatantly. Yeah. Anyway, should we do a, a rundown of what this match actually entailed? Because we got one of the few huge returns on this show, the Cody Vader. <laughs> I was like, what did I miss? Oh, so many huge returns. We'll get into more later. Yeah. There were so many huge returns like the Cody Vader. Production returns. Yes, production returns on this show. It was great. Um, but uh, they did so many entrances. There was four of them. But it felt like at least seven. <laughs> oh, I could have. I, I, the Rock could have kept entering. <laughs> I don't mind if his whole like every time he gets tagged in, mm -hmm. pff, everything goes dark. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool. It was uh, every, obviously everything went dark. Mm -hmm. I thought the setting and just the production in general 
were so good in in a in a in sort of a, a genuinely awe inspiring way, not a oh, Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunner sort mm-hmm. of just putting AR over everything way. That when the Rock's entrance had that and the final boss, like you were completing levels, mm-hmm. and final boss unlocked. Oh, it was terrific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really cool. That that. That man has presence. Mm. When he came out and there was the, the Brahma Bull logo that was in, in flames and he was just standing in the center of it with his People's Championship that he got the last the previous night. And he was just standing there. I was like, he is a star, isn't he? You know, I know it's a hot take, but The Rock is a star. Um, he, ha- he has presence. Uh, I don't understand, though, how Roman Reigns is somehow in better shape. Because that man is ripped now. And he was before. And now he's somehow more ripped. He added extra abs somehow. Crazy. I think when you're next to the rock. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> Just don't, rough don't you take a bit. day off. <laughs> so you have to yeah. you have to put in a few more sessions. Absolutely. I credit because whew, even my, my partner who does not watch wrestling, she was here for, for the the co- the co main event. Did the, she suddenly perk up when she saw well, Roman well, Reigns? Well she she saw Roman Reigns and was just like impressive. Yeah. Like yeah, and she doesn't even she doesn't even comment normally on stuff like that. What well, was it? But kind she of, was impressed. It's that way I do it a lot as well. Where you're like, I can't just say, "My God, they're attractive." <laughs> so I've got to say something else because I just need to get out a yeah. compliment. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, no, great actress. Great. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, wow. have you seen her hair? <laughs> <laughs> she said she wouldn't like it. She she wouldn't, but she appreciates him physically. <laughs> She acknowledges him physically. She acknowledges him physically. <laughs> oh, God, peace. It's great. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so in this match, it started off, let's say, slow. Yeah. It I, was. I think that's fair. Um, there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of feeling each other out, very slow kind of methodical beatdowns and stuff brawling out into the crowd. But the way they did it, I think, they added an extra element, which to me didn't justify the slowness of it, but justified the ref not calling off the match, mm. which was Rock threatening to fire the ref, which is him saying, I'm a board member, I will fire you if you end this match. That's it. That's all you need, and then everything else makes sense. And later on, there's this awesome spot uh, of, of a match with, with many awesome spots, mm. but this is probably one of my top few. The Rock just gets Seth Rollins' legs open and just punches him right in the dick yeah right in front of the referee and you're like oh cool that that's good but then the referee's reaction is to apologize to cody mm-hmm. and you're like oh my god you just turned the ref baby face yes yeah, it's brilliant yeah oh uh, yeah just, yeah the whole the whole psychology of that mm-hmm. was tremendous yeah really really good which means they could get away with doing things like that low blow spot using foreign objects and things in the match they could just get away with anything because What's he going to do? You know, he's going to get fired if he calls off the match. Bloodline always rules. Exactly. So after about, let's say, 20 minutes of this beatdown bit, it started to ramp up. So in total, it's a 44-minute match. It's a long time. Which is the second longest WrestleMania match of all time. Yeah. The only other one being an Iron Man match. <laughs> the, that hour, <laughs> hour and a bit long match. Yeah. Um, there was a, that was uh, boring too, though, for large parts. Yeah, but... exactly. Wow. What have they got in common? Um, but... Okay, I'm just going to reel off some spots that I really liked. Mm. So there was a disaster kick that Cody did that was countered into a Superman punch, which was really cool. Punched him out of midair. That was great. Reigns is selling of seeing his own blood because yeah. he, got, he, he, got, he got a little bit busted open on his nose or something. I think from that Superman punch, I think. And he just saw it and he was like, it was like um, White Goodman from Dodgeball. Like, nobody makes me bleed yeah. my own blood. And he's just, oh my God, this guy made me bleed? And he got furious, got into the corner. He was like, I'm going to spear this guy to hell because he made me bleed. It the was, disrespect. Oh, the disrespect. It. it was so good. Mm. Especially of how like how bleeding has played into this story mm. so far with Rock and, and Cody and stuff before. I'm like, huh. Bloodline. Yeah, right? Like, oh, ooh, it's interesting. It's spicy. Sounds like you're working on some heavily researched video there, Pete. Maybe. Who knows if I've put in so much time <laughs> researching the bloodline in the last couple months. Who knows? Um, uh, there was a, a super Cody cutter into a splash from yeah. Rollins. Which yeah, was really that was cool. great. Um, there was uh, the stomp and a crossroads, but then the Rock pulled the ref out the ring. Mm-hmm. That was like oh, that was a really good near fall. That was a really good near fall to to the point where I think you you mentioned this before and like <laughs> you were buying into the baby faces winning. It's so yeah. This does not happen to me very often because usually 
I'm enjoying the wrestling or the move, the superhero movie, but I'm also meta thinking, yeah, but they shouldn't do that because you want them to win. Mm -hmm. Like, sorry, you want them to lose to create a more compelling third act. Yeah. But very rarely, I either get worked or I like someone so much. Like, I just want Eddie Kingston to have an easy path to winning the yeah. AEW World Title. <laughs> That's bad book, and I don't care. Yeah. I want Eddie to win. I was getting into this match so much. I thought, just have the baby faces win. Mm -hmm. Even though that, that doesn't make the best story for night two and the comeback. Yeah. But they were so good mm. that you just you just want them to do well. Um, there was a really, really fun spot. I love this spot where Roman has the guillotine on Cody Rhodes. And they do the, the arm drop spot. Cody's firing up, firing up. And Rock just grabs Cody's legs and just holds him down like, what are you going to do? Come on, call the bell. He's not escaping. Like, Cody was literally just trapped on both ends from Rock and Roman. And then Seth comes in and stumps Roman on yeah, the face yeah. rather than the back of the head. I was like, oh, this is so good. Like, so many, like, unique creative spots. They just work into that drama so, so well. What, so good. What did you make of The Rock's performance in general? Because, you know, he's, he's what, 52? I can't 51, remember. 51. Yeah. Uh, 10 years of ring rust, you could mm. argue. Yeah. I think... <clears throat> One, I think it was the right call to have a tag match, mm -hmm. so he can hide a little bit yeah. amongst that. But even with that, there was a lot of solo time for The Rock, whether it be like he went off and brawled in the crowd by himself, no Roman or all hiding in that during the But the that's a parts. bit of smoke and mirrors. That's a bit of smoke and mirrors. Went off and did that. Uh, there wasn't a lot of like, you know, technical map wrestling or anything from him, but I never expected no. that from him. What he did do in this match was provide that presence, that aura, and the moves that he did hit looked very good. So I think it was pretty spot on you know i agree i i never once thought rock looks gassed mm -hmm. but maybe that's because it was freezing yeah maybe and he wasn't like <laughs> sweat, usually sweating yeah, so yeah, much yeah. uh he he always seemed to the, the heel character as well just let him feel a lot more solid yeah. in the ring as opposed to the baby face where yeah you've got to work differently and then in terms of the bumps he took mm -hmm. he did take that bump through the announce table sure did yeah. so i'm like okay Respect there for taking mm -hmm. a, a big level bump as well. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, there's going for a rock bottom through the table. Cody countered, delivered the rock bottom himself through off one comic table through another. Looked awesome. And then really, Roman, really cool. sorry to get ahead of your spots. Mm -hmm. Roman then seconds after speared Seth Rollins through the timekeeper's barricade yeah. area. Yeah, which is one of my favorite spots anyone can do. And that was the moment, probably about thirty five minutes in, or maybe even later, forty minutes in, where it went from. Well, wow, this is this has been ramping up to oh my god, this is the main event now. Yeah, hundred percent. That's when it felt like okay, now we're here. We've done all the foundation work. Let's get this this match properly underway. Um, for, for me, by the way, a lot of people are saying it's gone too long, and yeah. it is. You know, forty five minutes it is for a long. main event that is too long. But sometimes just having twenty minutes of the stalling of the slow work at the start does make the ending bit feel even more epic mm -hmm. it's it's like quantity is a quality of itself as joe stalin used to say <laughs> so that is, you know, that's a good quote Doesn't great matter where it comes from yeah uh but for me this is a completely different thing but kind of similar in 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 point is you know the new wwe speed stuff the, the, the three minute matches right i watched the first one they did mm. which was ricochet and dragon lee great people to have by the way for a three minute match they'll put on a, a great match but i got to the end of it and i was like it felt like a normal wwe match but they just skipped the first 10 minutes mm. like they just started at the end and it felt weird and it felt off and this i think was probably too far the other way in that you had 20 minutes of start that you didn't need but you do need something you can't just start halfway in you know you do need some foundation to make that payoff uh, that reward even even greater towards the end so I do agree with you. You do need some of that to start with. I do think it was a bit too long, but I'm willing to let it slide because the other half was so good um, when it got going. Um, there was, yeah, when, when it got to that spot of Rain spearing Ron through the barricade, my next night was, this is exactly what I wanted this match to be. Yeah. 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 It was so, so good. Uh, and there was, um, uh, uh, of course, uh, Roman accidentally speared Rock mm -hmm. at one point. A uh, bit of miscommunication where Rollins saved Cody, like barrel both of them out of the way, and Roman just spears Rock. And I thought, like, oh, this is where we lead to the Roman Rock match. And then I thought, like, oh, they're gonna have the babyfaces win. 
Oh my god! Yes. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah. this is where they're going to go against what I, everything I thought they were going to do, but it didn't cost him in the end, and they managed to recover. Rock's uh, selling as well of that spear. Mm -hmm. Like that was the most in pain he's looked mm. from anything he's done since he's come back. Yeah. So really put over Reigns' spear. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. And he's probably thinking, well, when I do have the match with you, this spear needs to look devastating. Right. It beats me. Yeah. Uh, there was a tweet from I think it was Simon Miller who said, I really enjoyed Rock selling every move like he'd been hit with Thor's hammer. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just every shot was like <laughs> the whole time it was great. Um, but then. Gets towards the end. Cody's making this big comeback. Seth has been taken out because he's he's tweaked his knee, which might play into night two mm. with the whole Drew McIntyre mm. thing. Um, but he's tweaked his knee. He's got a bad back. They've been <coughs> killing Seth the whole match. Uh, and he's been put through the barricade and a bunch of other stuff. So Cody's making this comeback kind of by himself. Hits a crossroads. Hits another one. Goes for a third one. But that's when Rock hits Cody with the weight belt slap across the back uh and then it allows roman to hit a spear rome uh, rock then asks for the tag in which roman accepts and says all right tags in rock hits the rock bottom hits a people's elbow and pins cody so the bloodline wins it's great so i experienced that i don't well i don't know how you experienced it It'd be interesting to talk about that moment of reigns tagging in the rock mm in conjunction with Reigns accidentally spearing the rock mm -hmm. it made me feel like Roman the big dog is actually a bit like I'm sorry mm -hmm. you're actually the boss I, I know we've been saying otherwise but I didn't mean to spear you you can win the match mm -hmm. and the rock to you know the rock takes it and he's like yes I will finish this match mm -hmm. status wise it made me feel like The Rock is the head of the table, not mm. Roman Reigns, and that Roman knows that. Mm -hmm. I think there was, there's definitely an element of that. I think the other the other reading of it, to me, I guess, is that it was an apology from Roman. Like, the mm -hmm. accent of Spear is like, I'm sorry, take the match, because I didn't mean to hit you that one time. We're cool, right? You I know? don't think there's any way for Roman's character to, to do that apology without... Mm -hmm. Because he's so obsessed right. with status and yes. acknowledgement and stuff like mm. that. Him making that act means he's just acknowledged the rock as the tribal chief. Yeah. It's so interesting. Mm. I love this stuff. We also have Mama Rhodes at ringside. Mm, of course. Um, who the rock just in the in the Sami Zayn wife position. I think anyone who was get any family member who was gonna get worked over yep. emotionally yep. was sat in the same place. Mm -hmm. The family chair. <laughs> Um, she was the rock constantly looked at her at one point he was going to get into the ring and he went nah <laughs> <laughs> just and he just back. went over and looked at mama rhodes with the, the belt the slow turn as well because he, he was about to get in stopped and then very slowly just turned his head and everyone knew what was coming he could see where he was turning we knew that she was there and i was like oh dear and he turned around and started looking i was like here we go <laughs> all right rock's gonna do something heinous um also loved afterwards uh, with Bloodline celebrating and everything, they had the exact same framing as WrestleMania 39, Cody sitting in the ring, the Bloodline yeah. in the background, and it's, it's the same thing. Make you think back like, well, Cody's lost again, and think about this other thing, because now he's going to have his big comeback. I was missing one thing though, wasn't it? A rubber chicken. A rubber chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I did see a beach ball earlier in this show I though. I saw that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy, I don't know where that went. Get rid of it. I told Pete this already, but when I saw that shot, I was like, oh, that looks like when Cena lost to The Rock <laughs> first. And then, then I was like, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, and, and last Oh, year. it's the Cody thing. But yes. it's just that what Triple H has managed to do, even mistakes or things that are just a chance of history and, mm -hmm. and stuff, it, he makes it feel like it's part of a larger plan. Yes. And it, that was a very concerted production shot that they knew they had to get yep. to tell that story visually. Mm -hmm. Um and they were, you know, the commentators didn't, you didn't have Michael Cogan. Oh my God, look at it. It looks exactly like, like you know, hammering you over the head. Mm -hmm. Just the oh, oh, the main event, I, I really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I, it felt proper big time. And what makes me excited is that I'm excited. Yeah. More for the follow-up. Mm, exactly. I think I'm going to stick by what I said. I'm not going to hammer home about last year too much. <laughs> I'm still not as excited as I was last year. And I don't think I would ever be, regardless of what they booked. Mm. But I am excited for tomorrow. Uh, well, tonight, I suppose. Yeah. Um, to to find out what happens. Tomorrow morning. For tomorrow me. morning for me. But uh, yes, I, I am very excited to see where this goes. I thought this was a great match. 
yes, it's a bit long, but once it gets going, top stuff. Mm -hmm. Main event caliber match right there. Before we get into your thoughts on the Ultra Chats, we want to say a big thank you to our sponsor for this episode, WrestlingMasterclass.com. Here's a little peek. Ever dreamt of breaking into the professional wrestling business as a wrestler, promoter, booker, commentator, referee, journalist, podcaster, YouTube star, or another key role? Wrestling Masterclass is a historic online course featuring over 70 HD video lessons, podcasts, and seminars with some of the world's top wrestling experts, both in the ring and behind the scenes, including Will Ospreay, Raven, Dutch Mantel, Doug Williams, Mike Kionda, and so many more. Start your journey today at WrestlingMasterclass.com. I just did that thing you're not meant to do in radio. You're not mm -hmm. meant to throw to your own voice. <laughs> and I voice over that advert, don't you I? You do, that's true. Well, it's a great course. Honestly, I, I was saying when it was being developed, I wish something like this was around like 10 years ago when mm -hmm. I was trying to... Because I would just get, turn up at wrestling shows and be like, need any help? And that's literally how I got into sort of this position. Yeah. Um, but like here, there's there's... The module sort of split into courses, split into eleven things, and each module is a different part. So it's not just here's how you become a wrestler and mm -hmm. you sort of find in a training school and all those things. It's also here's how you could become a commentator mm -hmm. or a referee. Here's how to be, be a booker creatively. Here's how to be a promoter. Mm -hmm. Here's the sort of insurance you need and mm -hmm. the things you need to think about to run your own show. It's got a module like that. The bit I want to talk about later, though is Wrestling Psychology Part 1 and Part 2. Mm. They're two separate modules. Because we always talk about psychology mm -hmm. in wrestling. Yeah. And I never really know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Ernie Davis is exposed <laughs> as a fraud. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. By the way, I'm, I'm also the sort of podcast guest on the Becoming a Wrestling <laughs> YouTuber yeah. section. And here I am saying, yeah, I, know, I never really... <laughs> You know, like, I, you can say, psych oh, that match had great psychology. Mm -hmm. And nine out of ten times, I'll be great. But then yeah. if you said, what's wrestling psychology, Ollie? Mm -hmm. I'd say, well, it's body parts. You know, you just... <laughs> work in the leg. You work a leg, <laughs> don't you? And I wouldn't really know how to like to explain it to someone else, mm -hmm. which I guess is not a sign that you don't fully grasp it mm -hmm. as, a, as a concept in your own brain. And one of the things was the seven points of a wrestling match, which I'd heard before. And it's like, here's all the parts of a wrestling match that you need. It's like the, you establish, shine, cut off, heat, blah, 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 finish. And there's a worksheet in it. It goes, it takes you through all the points um, in the video bit. And then it gives you a worksheet. And it's like, go watch a match and mm -hmm. break it down. And I have done Sami Zayn versus Gunther. Interesting. Okay. So we'll get on to that later. But yeah. yes, please do check out the WrestlingMasterclass.com. The link's in the video description below. Moderators should be spamming it in the chat right now. At least click through and check out the modules. There's some really like, it gives you a real good flavor of what's there because I think you can see a, a free lesson and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yes. Right. Your chat. Ben Vlerick says, main event was perfection. Don't you know? We've seen quite a few mixed responses. Mm -hmm. I've seen everything from Mania was the worst Mania mm -hmm. yep. to, which oh my true. God, this is the best night of my life. Which is also not true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, slow burn, methodical, but stars like Cody, Roman, and especially Rock can pull it off. Match had a big fight feel, magical vibe, similar to last year's main event. When it picked up, everybody involved was on their A game. Mm -hmm. Rollins blended in, stepped up, felt like he belonged with the rest. Rock pinning Cody was the best choice. Keep Rock strong, throw as much adversity yeah. at Cody last minute before he really finish, finally finishes the story. Bloodline rules, well, will well rule. <laughs> <laughs> Kudos to especially Rock. 50 plus, hasn't wrestled in 10 years. The man gave his all and delivered. Sold his ass off, even though I will be claiming it's goofy ass selling. Mm -hmm. I've always liked the Rock selling. Yeah, it is goofy ass like, selling. Sure, Michaels is a goofy yeah, seller. Yeah, like, absolutely. That. Come on, you laughed at his spear cell, didn't you? <laughs> Looked like he S like pooed himself. <laughs> Bless him. I just said I like that cell. Yeah, it's great. Anyway, hope we get another Rock match. I'm excited for potential matchups. Never thought I'd say that. Rock versus Cody. Rock versus a babyface Roman. Hell, Rock versus Seth even. They had chemistry too. Why hasn't he been a heel in movies? He's so damn good at it. Well, I don't know if you know this. He did play Black Adam. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway. He's um, the hero. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they do, because of this, because of Rock pinning uh, Cody, which in my head, I'd booked it that Roman pins Cody here to really hammer home mm. that Roman is beating Cody, and then Cody beats Roman the next night as like a comeuppance thing. Rock beating Cody here says to me that there might be a Rock Cody match at like SummerSlam, Saudi, something. And then you do Rock Roman like next Mania. Or maybe yeah. at a Saudi show in November or something, you know? And I think that is like the the trilogy of these rock matches. Filming schedule wise, I think most people are, are speculating that it would be the November Saudi show. Mm. Yeah. Um for, for Rock Cody. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, I mean, one thing we didn't talk about in the main event, and it's the only criticism I've really got, uh, besides the too long, although that wasn't really a thing for me. It's a great build for Rock versus Cody. Yeah. And Roman is, and for, for most of the last two months, has felt not second rate, but nowhere near as special. That's not the match I really want to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's like, that's not optimal. Yeah. But I'm still invested in everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Banjo Cage. Last year, I was excited for Cody Rhodes to be Universal Champion, but now it will just merely be relief. Mm. Also, I think people miss the point of what a promo is. Steinemath didn't entice people to tune into TNA, but the pipe bomb drew people to WWE. T-shirt says it. Uh, yep, you can get my T-shirt, Pipe Bomb Greater Than Math, at uh, WrestleShop.com. And on Friday, in the PFK tournament, mm-hmm. we definitively proved, once and for all, fair and square, yep. that Pipe Bomb is greater than math. No shenanigans in that match. Absolutely not. But great, Anton. Will we get Pete reacting to his own reaction of Cody's story? Finish your story, Pete. Stay tuned. <laughs> what I say to Matt? <laughs> Quite possibly. Kenny Jones. Love your work, gents. Pete, do you remember the reaction video to when Cody left AEW? Yep. You laughed and said he's going to end Roman's title reign. Yeah. Cody went from Racing Andrade to The Rock and probably beating Roman for the belt in two and a half years. Yeah, so someone, someone messaged, I think it might have been after Rumble or sometime around, someone tweeted me with a clip of me and Luke on that immediate, like, because I think we were live for, like, the mm. Raw podcast or something when that news broke. And we were saying, I mean, I, I just don't see Cody as a main eventer in WWE, like Intercontinental Champion, maybe. And I was like, yeah, he's not going to dethrone Roman, is he? <laughs> Whoops. Sometimes I'm just wrong. Well, and, and happy to be wrong. Yeah, absolutely. It's so great what's happened. Rob Burwell, member for 31 months. I might be going to night two tonight, and whether or not I can, I'm going to enjoy the ultimate shenanigans that will be this main event, and Cody better win. I'm expecting this to be... So much sports entertainment. Yeah. Like, just so many shenanigans. If you don't like overbooked messes, you're probably not going to like this main event. Well, if this is Infinity War, we all know what happens with Endgame. And uh, there's been talk, you know, with the rock beatdown, with, like, the Stone Cold and John Cena thing in the background. I'm just saying, stuff could happen, all right? Cena, Austin, raising Cody's arm Mm -hmm. over a beaten and blooded Roman and Rock. Getting KO and Sammy, why not? (sighs) Throw that, Jay and Jimmy, bring them back. Very exciting. And finally for now, Morty Jr. 5, still convinced... Still convinced Seth will lose and later Cody will win. After the match, he'll be kneeling, holding the title, and Seth will stomp him on it and Priest cashes in, mirroring Dusty having the title taken away. Honestly, (laughs) any form of cash in, I'll be really annoyed. (laughs) Don't do that, please. Uh, Well, I... That's technically not a dusty finish either. No. A dusty finish is a title that was... A win that was never recognised. Yes. Um, Which I personally am not against... I but am. for me, that requires The Rock to be the special guest referee. Mm-hmm. And maybe that still happens when, you know, eventual ref bump happens. Sure. Rock puts on the jerk, like, that makes him the... Yeah. I mean, actually, that may- might have been set up with him, George Jackin, with the referee on this mm-hmm. night one match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> there could- yeah, I mean, that would be the dusty finish, right? Of- Cody wins. Cody wins. Rock's like, no. Absolutely not. We're restarting this match. Yeah, same- Rock bottom, Cody. Yeah, same ref from night one as well yeah that'd be great mm, that's fun sounds like a good story it does sound like a good story but also don't do that <laughs> um one last bit as well i think i told you this earlier um so my partner who does not watch wrestling at all has basically no interest in it and finds it a bit silly but now um, she's really interested in roman reigns she's like following all the accounts physically um <laughs> uh 
she was watching the main event with me and everyone was making their entrances and she said they were very long, which they were. <laughs> Seth Rollins came out and did his entrance and he got in the ring, did his pose and the people were singing his song. And I just heard her just go. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's wrong? And she just goes, I can't take him seriously. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's fair. He does look very silly. He looks ridiculous. Yeah. Right, please keep getting your uh, Ultra Chats. Oh, in. I nearly went AEW there. Nearly. Uh, and we'll read every single one over five US dollars out before the end of the show. Mm -hmm. So this play-by-play -play review of WrestleMania 49 one started off with a new Then Now Forever Together Sting. Together Forever. Yes, I said them the wrong way around. Then, no, Then Now Forever, forever Together. Forever Together, you're right. Together. I'm wrong. Oh, no, I think I said it wrong the first time around. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> And what it is, when I first watched it, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, they've tried something new. I get it. I'll mm -hmm. get used to it. Yeah. And then they, I, me and Pete watched it again like half an hour ago. I really like it. I think it's fine. It's a bit long. <laughs> but maybe this is the WrestleMania version. It's yeah. the long bumper and we'll have a shorter version. Maybe. Going forward. I doubt it. All Triple H's voice, though. Yeah. Because, as the commentator said at the start of the show, we're in the Triple H era now. Yeah. So, so he did say that. The commenta I could, commentators did say that. Yeah. I wrote that in my notes and I wrote a whole opening around the Triple H era. Mm. And then I thought, wait, did did I make that up in my head? No. I tried to rewatch the clip before my news went live, but uh, there was an audio issue on the network. Mm. Did you see this? I didn't, know. Where it was just like, it the, the visuals started at 000 with halfway through Becky versus Rhea. Oh. But it was all the audio from the start of the show. Oh, interesting. Um, it's fixed now. Yeah. But yeah, that's... Oh, so it is... They, they literally called the, it the, the Triple the H commentary, era. The commentary said, we're now in the Triple H era. That, that's pretty definitive to me. That is what they said. I'm considering that Triple H's promo said, <coughs> this is the start of a new era. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a cool, like, almost movie-level opening video package with a chap called Meek Mill. Mm -hmm. Got some cool cold open shots of Cody, Seth, Roman and Rock walking around mm -hmm. backstage. Yeah, Really, really gave the, the whole night a through line. It wasn't just a series of matches. This was, it felt like a movie this entire night. Yeah. And that's maybe why I enjoyed it so much. I gave it a ridiculously high score, according to some people. Yeah, I, th <laughs> I think it was pretty high. Yeah. What would you have given it? Not that. Not 90. Uh, a lot of people are saying that's not the wrong anthem. So they sang the proper national anthem when they usually sing the other one. Oh, sure. America. I don't I don't know. Um, because Vince McMahon liked the non Oh, I see. Version. Right. So they sang the actual national anthem this time. I think so. New era. Uh, and but, but more importantly, I <coughs> just want to point out, big return number one of the night. Okay. The real feel was back. <laughs> they kept talking about the temperature all night. Um, it was great. I loved it. It was a bit cold from what I hear, yeah. which converted from Fahrenheit, because I don't know Fahrenheit, was about nine degrees Celsius. Uh, it's chilly if you're just which sitting is, down. Which is definitely a bit chilly. Mm -hmm. But also, do we need to hear about it after every match? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it, I, I got a big pop. I was like, the real feel. They didn't say real feel. But for me, it was the real feel. When when I first started out in uh, sort of production and stuff, I was told two things by the guy who was my boss at the mm -hmm. time. One, never use a record scratch. It's hokey <laughs> okay. and a cheap way to do it. We a, do it all joke. the time in the news. Uh, we? we do blip. <laughs> no, we do record we scratches. We do bars and tones. We don't do whoop. Yeah, we do. When? All the time, you no, kidding? we do bars and toes. <laughs> We've definitely done record scratches a lot. <laughs> Not on my episodes. Okay, yeah. And the other one was, the audience don't care how hot you are or mm -hmm. how cool you are. Yep. You are making a show. Uh, because, you know, studios, filming sets can get really, really hot. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you're not scripted, you just start talking about how hot it is. Mm -hmm. And it's bad yeah. TV. Yeah. But here it did set like it did influence the the wrestlers. It's more of a sporting thing. I think there was a point mm. to bring it up to be like, how is it going to affect the wrestlers in this in these conditions and blah blah blah. But when they're like, I've got hand warmers, I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. Can't use my tablet now. Yeah. Thanks, Michael Cole. Why do you think it did affect things? Uh, 
uh, is the crowd. Yeah. I mean, stadium shows by the nature that a lot of the atmosphere dissipates outwards mm-hmm. and yeah. upwards. So they're not as intense as arena shows. But um, yeah, not the greatest crowd. No. And that's that's unusual for Philadelphia. Mm. So it's either too many too many norms. Too many normies. Have gotten in yeah. because WWE's hot right now. Yeah. Or they were legit freezing. And yeah. it's difficult to get really drunk when you're cold. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And that's what you need to be loud. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was unfortunate. I don't think, I think I've seen people exaggerate me like, oh, worst crowd ever or anything like that. They weren't that bad, but they could have been louder. And it did take away from a couple of the matches, I think. I know Mania is always in a, a stadium these days, but I really, really hope in a couple of years' time as part of the Triple H era, because he is a man of tradition as well, mm-hmm. We get a mania in Madison Square Garden. That'd be cool. And it's just like the hottest thing, the craziest crowd. Mm-hmm. And each ticket is like five thousand pounds. <laughs> so they so they don't actually lose any revenue. Only rich people can go. That's the <laughs> That's way to do it. Do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, also part of the new Triple H era, mm. he was announced as Paul Triple H Levesque. Not just Triple H. Well, at the Hall of Fame. Mm. Paul Heyman got a Paul Levesque chant going yeah. for Triple H in the front row. Wild. It's weird. Yeah. I don't want it. I want, <laughs> I want him to be Hunter forever. Yeah, yeah exactly. Punk right? talked about that on the Hawani interview. Like, mm. did people call him Paul, but the old, like, the previous generation of which he's a part still call him Hunter. Yeah. Like, Randy Orton would call mm-hmm. him Hunter. Yeah. Weird. The Anywho. opening match was Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, Becky got a recap, like, a the video entrance where she got a recap of her whole career excerpts of her book mm-hmm. i thought it was quite well done mm-hmm. as far as ar goes and then ripley came to the ring with a live band mm-hmm. which actually sounded okay yeah sure i mean most wrestlemania live band entrances sound like they haven't been audio checked i will say it was a million times better than another one we got on this show which i think <laughs> might be the worst wrestlemania live entrance of all time little wayne's yeah um so the, do you want to talk about the other big return they made their entrances to the ring and then when they're, they're doing the ring announcing and they're introducing the, the 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 title the champion and the challenger they got the 8k camera hmm. And I legitimately popped. I went, the the 8K camera! Because it looks so nice. Use it more, man. It's so beautiful. I love that shot. It's like full-on portrait mode. Yeah. It's beautiful. so good. Um, So this match, I I really enjoyed this match. It was the story of Becky having experience and strategy, like Rhea's arm is injured, so I'm going to target that arm. My finisher is the disarmer. Mm -hmm. And Ripley was like, yeah, but I'm stronger and I can outlast you with toughness. Mm -hmm. And they just told that story. So it was very back and forth. And I felt like, although the crowd did sometimes boo Becky, although the boos for Becky, the boos for uh, Cody, boos just sound louder, even though it could be a small portion of people. And because everyone else was quite quiet because of the cold, I wouldn't put too much stock in no, I wouldn't either. that being a result of bad booking. Yeah, 100% <laughs> agree. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this match. Um, I I think that there was one point where I was like, oh, are they just, they're just ending it now? Mm. Where Ripley got in the, the prism trap submission. And then she hooked in a body scissors on top of it. I was like, oh, this is like the grapevine for an ankle lock. Like, this is like uh, the next level of the thing. I was like, oh, are they just ending it? But Becky got out of it. Fair enough. Um, But then what I really liked about this one was the you got the payoff of so much booking for months and months and arguably like years at this point for Rhea Ripley, because that Riptide is super protected. Mm. Very, very rarely, not that I can recall currently, do many people kick out of one Riptide. So when Becky Lynch kicks out of a Riptide in this match, you go, oh my god, like that, I completely bought that as mm-hmm. the finish. Because that is how you protect a move over the course of at least a year at this point, because we won the title last year. That ship, Ripley kicking out of a manhandle slam, Becky then kicking out of the, uh, of the, the Riptide, I was like... Okay, wh- wild. This is this is crazy. How are they going to up it from here? When Ripley got on the top rope, I was like, 
Oh, they're going to do a Superman handle slam. That's how Becky's going to win. Of course, they went for that. But that's not what happened. Because Ripley then picked her up and did a Riptide into the corner. And it was really cool. Yeah. I love that spot. Uh, and then immediately hits another Riptide. And then Ripley retains. I thought this match was rad. Yeah, good finish. Good opener. Mm-hmm. Went about 17 minutes, I think. Yep. And I, I don't know if this was always the decision. I, th- I feel like Becky was probably slotted to win this belt. Her books out. Mm-hmm. <coughs> she was the big female star of the of the division. She's been going on that redemption arc storyline. Mm-hmm. She's the baby face. Yeah. But I think keeping the belt on Rhea's the the best call. Yeah, it's not it's not a bad move at all. I don't know where Lynch goes from here. I don't know where Ripley goes from here. Who who's left? Hmm. Well, maybe some sort of draft he could do. Bring over yeah, some maybe. people. Yeah. From the other brand. Yeah. Um, because probably, you know, you've got Belair and Jay Cargill who mm-hmm. are going to clash. Yeah. But I guess like a Cargill-Ripley match somewhere down the line. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Uh, next up, we got the six-person, six-team mm-hmm. uh, ladder match for two sets of belts, the yep. Raw and SmackDown, which is DIY versus Awesome Truth versus Champions Judgment Day versus New Catch Republic versus New Day versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Yes. Pretty deadly. Got a fun little mm-hmm. skip beforehand, walking down sort of running down each team and their chances. They said uh, Champa was Gargano's dad, father and son team. Yeah. And he's like, no, he's not. He's, Gargano's not his son. He's like, so they're each other's fathers. Yeah. I thought that was funny. Yeah. It's a good bit. Um, apparently, Pretty Deadly will get the winners. They, they set up there, okay. like the number one contenders, I guess. Cool. And then we got the the entrances. DIY came out in proper DX gear. DX cosplay. Yeah. yeah. And they got the the green yeah. X mm-hmm. for the entrance. Yeah. The match itself, while it was cool, because ladders, tables, spots, mm-hmm. it was just a bit too much, like, busy for me. There's 12 people yeah. in that ring. I think you you could make that work. And for me, if you try and treat each team as, like, one person and try and book around that, I think there's a way to make a lot of the busyness not seem as busy if you get some very creative tag team spots you get like because it's a unique environment having a tag team ladder match like that they haven't done this many teams in so long you can get some really creative tag team spots here and it felt like a lot of the spots were just kind of one person to one person Mm. so there was a lot of like just a normal ladder match but happened to be with tag teams and i felt like it lacked that kind of extra level of creativity to try and make it into its own unique this is a tag team ladder match stipulation kind of thing um not helped, I think, by the fact that the SmackDown SmackDown tag team titles were won kind of unceremoniously. Yeah. With Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, they just kind of pushed. I think it was DIY and New Catch Republic just like pushed them off ladders, picked it up, and then they just grabbed the belts. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. All right. Anyway, moving on. And then it kind of no fanfare kind of thing, just move on because they were going for both sets of belts that were separate. Uh, yeah, it, it it just felt a bit underwhelming. It felt like the match was designed to separate the belts. Absolutely. Rather than prioritize what would make the best match. Exactly, yeah. Because if this was just for one set of belts and it was three teams in your classic TLC, Mm -hmm. Dudley's, Edge and Christian, Hardy's days, I think I would have preferred that match so much more. Mm -hmm. Just six people in the ring working together in in teams. Yeah. But, yeah, I... Yeah. But I don't want to... I don't want to do it down because it was entertaining. It was. And every, you know, some people took some hellacious bumps. Uh, Waller, who doesn't really take <laughs> bumps like this, he sort of Miz like, power bomb through a ladder outside. It's a great spot. <laughs> Immediately after winning the belt as well, he still had the belt in his shoulder and yeah. was just holding it as he went through. I thought that was very funny. Um, Our Truth was the most over. He got a hot tag from Miz yep. in a match without tags. Yeah. Did his whole Cena five moves of Doom bit. And then he actually. Uh, sort of got his own back on Judgment Day after all that time, and he was the one who went up and claimed the Raw Tag Team titles. Yeah. Um, I think... There, and again, I don't want to gloss over some of the great spots in this match, because there were some great ones. It just felt it was lacking that extra level. Like, Johnny Gargano hitting a slingshot DDT through a table on the outside. I was like, oh my god, that mm. looks awesome. Um, or like the air raid crash from Champa off yeah. the ladder in the oh, center was, ring was yeah. fantastic. But then when we got to the end, this is a me thing. I don't really care about the awesome truth. Mm-hmm. The crowd there loved it. And they were super, super into our truth and 
when he put the titles, everyone was like, yeah, you feel good WrestleMania moment. Me personally, I don't really care. So at the end of it, I'm like, these are the two teams that I care the least about winning the belts. And I know that's a me problem, not a them problem. They did not book the ba- book the match poorly. That's just I don't particularly care about the winners. I think it. I mean, I feel the same way. Yeah. And I, it is important because it's not just about this match. It's about well, what's the next month of TV? Mm-hmm. Are you excited for the tag division right now? Yeah. No. Not really. No. <laughs> but you could sort of satisfy both masters. You just have awesome truth win the first set of tag belts. Mm. Then you get that pop because. It's kind of a funny thing. Truth has won it. Mm-hmm. And then the, the actual winners, if even if it's Waller and Theory, they can get that heel heat that they've done it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would have much preferred a DIY or New Catch Republic win. Yeah, 100%. <coughs> I felt like this could have, been, could have been used to elevate a team more, mm-hmm. and it wasn't used for that. Um, the sun has now set, mm. and everything is dark, and it looks awesome. Uh, the next match is Rey Mysterio and Andrade because uh, Dragon Lee, was it, who was added to the match, was taken out on SmackDown mm-hmm. versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. This felt, you know, even though it's not a singles feud, <coughs> singles blood match or a, for a championship or anything, I thought, well, you know, to faction warfare, mm-hmm. they've done a really good job of this. Maybe it deserves to be on the Mania card. But then when you actually watch it, you're like, oh, this was just filler to set up a celebrity sports thing Mm -hmm. and the proper match will happen at the next pay-per-view. Probably, yeah. Mm. Good stuff. I also want to shout out the star of Monday Night War, Umberto Carrillo, Mm -hmm. who was there. Um, Being great, by the way. Yeah, Yeah, claw marks or whatever. Also, speaking of getting in shape, a man's gone ripped. Crazy. Well done, Umberto. Star of Monday Night War. And Monday Night Smackdown, specifically. Um, I love Andrade's spinning elbow thing. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite moves. And the way that Dom solved this one was so good. Where I, I legitimately went, oh, when he did it. It's one of those ones where you just get that little that jump of excitement. I love that move so much. It was an amazing bit when Andrade put Ray on his mm. shoulders in an electric chair. Yeah. And they both did a sort of jumping crossbody like they're one person, like Muppet Man has done a crossbody, take out uh, Santos and Dominic outside. It was great. I thought, I've never seen that. Mm-hmm. And even now, like, at whatever age Ray is, he's still doing innovative things I've never seen. Mm. Yeah. And so really, really impressed by that. It's wild. Yeah. We got the, speaking of, we got the whacking wild spot. <laughs> the springboard mm-hmm. super leap. Yeah. Um, but then ultimately... Santos kind of was in a place to have it won. He's calling <coughs> to Dominic to get some a chair. Mm-hmm. But these two massive guys in lucha masks stopped Dominic and let Ray and Andrade get the win. And they revealed themselves in the celebration to be Jason Kelsey. And the other guy I've not written the name down of. I think it's Lane. Yeah. Lane Stevens. <laughs> sure. I'll take your word for it. Uh, I believe we also both wrote in our notes. Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson. I think we both wrote in our notes. Let's tell his Swiss boyfriend. It's funny mm. because it's not. Yeah. And you made that mistake in the news that everyone that everyone said yeah, you were wrong everyone, about. Everyone. Even SP3. Yeah. Message me. Yeah. Be like, hey, Dude, bud. I know this. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this this was really a filler match, but. You know, I I think it's fine to be on there because you want a bit of mainstream celebrity Mm -hmm. Johnsons. Yeah, I don't mind it. That's fine. Uh, Probably the worst match on the show, unfortunately, is Jimmy versus Jey Uso. I think most of us could have told you this going in. Not that it will be a bad match, but that no one will properly. It won't click properly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Me and Luke have got this. I don't know if you think the same, but just these sort of brother on brother matches rarely seem good on paper but never actually click i don't know why that is Mm. because it feels like they should you know again on paper it sounds like a really good idea especially these two with their history of the bloodline story and everything you'd think this is a home run idea to get them because it's not just brothers imploding it's the whole context of the bloodline and Samoan culture and everything that feeds into that but yeah it just It just didn't work for me, this one, because it felt like it had maybe three moves and two of them were super kicks, (laughs) you know? Uh, 
that I will say the video package for for this match. Yeah. One was great, and two almost made the story make sense. Which well done for that because they missed out the bit where Jimmy turned on Roman first. Yeah. So if you if you just ignore that, the story makes sense. It's great. Um, but uh, yeah, it it just it just didn't work. I I wrote in my notes that they do they just feel like they're off a step. You know, mm. it just feels like they're not quite connected. They're not quite clicking with whatever the, the story was trying to be. And they tried to have this big emotional moment later on where Jay was going to trying to do another super kick and Jimmy kind of put his hands up and told him to stop and Jay was debating, do I stop, do I not? And then Jay was pleading with him saying, I'm sorry, tried to reconcile. And of course, Jimmy turned on him and the crowd were like, boo, yeah. obviously. We You're an idiot, was, Jay. You're an idiot. We knew that was going to happen. Jimmy made the comeback, didn't get the win. And then Jay came back and then won with a spear and a splash. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay. I, yeah, it it, it yeah. didn't it didn't get to that next level of emotional family drama that it felt like they wanted to do for this. I so when when Jimmy was like no mm -hmm. stop yeah. and Jay's acting of that and Jimmy's acting, I was like, oh okay, they found a way to make me into this. Mm -hmm. It's a bit weird. It's coming eight minutes into the match. Mm -hmm. It's an eleven minute match, joint shortest on the whole card. This even though like I had my reservations about this match clicking. It's this is a 15 20 minute match minimum to tell this like big blood feud mm -hmm. story thing. So it didn't feel earned. Yeah. When the match wanted us to get really emotional and invested in that moment. Um so it needed it either needed more time and a bit more heat from Jimmy or Jay beating up the other one or I don't know why they're so averse to using him. A Rikishi. Mm. You bring a Rikishi out here, or he says like, "Don't do it," or "Stop," or, or even helps Jimmy win mm -hmm. because I think probably this is their first match. If this is going to be a continuing program, Jimmy should win. Mm -hmm. But I, Jay just Jay just won. That's the end of it. That's it. Move on. You just need the one and done. Hey, that's their finishing brotherly move. love. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think maybe even if like Rikishi's trying to like calm them both down and be like, you don't need to do this, just, and then Jimmy super kicks Rikishi. You know, Whoa. That, that, that would be a really cool spot. Like that would be like a yeah. <gasps> moment. It that, would have that, something, right? That's a bit of like emotional drama that makes you buy into that match a little bit mm. more, and it just feel like it didn't have it. Also, Lil Wayne's performance was <laughs> the worst thing I heard on this show. It was dreadful. Mm. Um, I don't mind Lil Wayne. I think he's fine. Here he wasn't. Uh, I hated it. Pequenel shoots on Little Way. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we got Bianca Belair, Naomi, and Jay Cargill, which I refer to as Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair, and also Naomi's here. <laughs> Versus damage control of <coughs> Asuka, Kyrie Sane, and Dakota Kai. Yeah. Uh, again, this was kind of similar to the Latino match, mm -hmm. where it's like, well, it's not for a singles blood feud. It's not really for any long lasting story and it's not for the belts mm -hmm. that are that are there. So what is this why isn't this a TV match? Mm -hmm. you, you know, it could be a main event of TV. I'm not saying it's a bad TV mm -hmm. match, but is it a WrestleMania card level worthy match? Mm. Cuz if this is one night, this isn't on there. Yeah. Well, it might be. Just a if very long mania. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um but what it was what it was designed to do, which is another eight minute match of getting Cargill over and making Bel Air look really cool, they achieved that well. 100%. So I don't think this match should have been on the card, but what it set out to do, it did perfectly fine. Yep. I think Cargill once again looked really cool. Holy hell. They talk about getting in WWE shape. Mm -hmm. Like they used to say this about indie wrestlers in the late noughties. Like all of a sudden you'd get really cut. And you look really lean. And when I saw Jade Cup come out, and on the SmackDown as well, I was like, oh, Christ. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a WrestleMania show. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable condition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the Babyface's entrance, by the way, was really cool. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Really liked their entrance. I thought it was awesome. It was like a, they descended from a big platform. It was a Bobby Roode platform that they had. <laughs> it was a Bad News Barrow. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Uh, but Jade got the win with uh, the Jaded on Dakota. Oh, and Asuka tried to miss mm. someone. I think it was Belair. It was Belair, yeah. Um, but she ducked, and it should have hit Kyrie. Yeah. But the wind blew it away. Yeah. <laughs> didn't <laughs> it's look... no one's fault. Yeah, it didn't look 
fantastic. But you know, whatever it is what it is. Oh, and Belair's hair match. whip on Asuka. Oh, it's oh, another that... gunshot one. That one. <laughs> it sounded great. Great. Uh, but yeah, the women's tag champs felt like an afterthought, but that's nothing new. Nah, it's what it is. Our final match we're going to talk about, though, was my match of the night, your match of the night, yeah, too. I think agreed. most people's match of the night. It's going to be one of the better matches of the year. Gunther versus Sami Zayn on the 666th day mm -hmm. of Gunther's Intercontinental Championship reign. This started off with the emotions already up here because they had a backstage bit. And they had the video package, and then you see Sami Zayn backstage. And he's there with his wife and his child, and just talking about like, and they're just kind of, he's just kind of riffing. He's just being like, you know, I'm going to do a few thanks, guys. And then his kid is like, you can do it. And he's like, all right, yeah, thank you, and all that stuff. He's like, and he's like, you're going to play your music soon. He's like, yeah, they're going to play my music soon, don't you worry. And I'm like, mm, yeah. okay, yep, yeah, yeah. all right, Sammy. Going to do it for his kid and all that stuff. Then he walks along, sees Chad Gable. Chad's like, I'm not going to come out there with you because you've always been able to do it yourself. Just remember when you win, you owe me a favor. I'm like, okay, cool, nice. And then Sammy's walking up this big kind of gangway going up to Gorilla. And he's firing himself up. He's hitting things. He's kicking like a bottle off the floor. And I'm like, let's go, Sammy, let's go. And when I think the emotions are here, he walks through. You just see KO. You just see Kevin Owens standing there. And then he just hits him, hugs him. And he's like, let's go, Sammy, let's go. Like firing him up. And I was like, go, oh, let's go, Sammy. I love this man so much. I love Sami Zayn. He's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. And this like little fire up spot, people had their their questions with the gauntlet match and Sammy winning and not Chad. And it was like, oh, this isn't the story that we wanted. We wanted Chad, not Sammy and blah, blah, blah. This little backstage bit just made me go, cool, Sammy's winning. Yeah. I need Sammy to win now because that's the entire story. You've just sold me on everything. Unless Chad costs him. Right, <laughs> which I did not want. I No, I, well, I didn't. I wouldn't have minded it, but that yeah. was a doubt in my head. Yeah. I, I totally agree with the Sammy stuff. Like you look at, what have been my the most emotionally invested moments for me in WWE in the last year and a half? Mm -hmm. And sure, some of them are bloodline only, like mm -hmm. the Jay turning on Roman and Jimmy bits. Mm -hmm. But really, it's dominated. Four of the top five are going to be Sammy at saving KO at Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Sammy at Elimination Chamber. Yep. It's Sammy and KO beating the Usos at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And it's Sammy and Gunther here. Yeah. He, 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 I don't get that way with any other wrestler. I just, he's such a good baby face, such a good underdog. I, I, I love this match. And this yeah. is where... Oh, here we go. Here's the sheet. I did my homework. Yeah. So the seven points of a wrestling match... Mm -hmm. Which I, I'd, I'd always heard about, but I never actually mm -hmm. knew what they were. Or, or could, yeah. You know, because like, I know a lot about film structure and story mm. structure. So I'm like, okay, here's the lowest point or the mm -hmm. crisis of confidence, the hero's journey stuff. Yeah. Like, I learned that at uni. Um, but I didn't know how it was, how wrestlers would apply that in a template to their matches. So, number one, the establish. Mm -hmm. This is where you clearly establish. If someone's just coming in, they don't know any of the story, what's the story? What what are these characters here? And you've got Sammy being wished luck by everyone backstage. Mm -hmm. You've got Gunther just walking down alone, mm -hmm. and he's intimidating. There's no Imperium with him. They were on the oh, stage. Yeah, and he, he once he threw the coat, he then walked they, by they himself. Vanished. Yeah. <coughs> and then when the bell rings, Sammy's moving around the ring. He's doing this. Mm -hmm. Gunther just standing tall in the middle. You've clearly established. Sammy is the plucky underdog. Gunther is this powerful, dominating heel champion. And as my partner correctly said, because this was the first match that she watched with me this morning, she correctly came in and was like, Gunther's supposed to be the heel, right? And I'm like, yes. Oh, so it's... Exactly. Sort of instinctive. Yeah. And usually ginger people are, are the heels. But right? like, you know, yeah. un uneducated people just go, ginger right? person, ginger person. Ginger person. That's why everyone thinks Laurie's the devil. <laughs> That's why he's always evil. Then, then you get the shine. And this mm -hmm. is the part of the match where the baby face shows that, yeah, they can do this. Mm -hmm. They can be, it gives you hope. And Sammy just starts off with chops mm -hmm. and then he'll dodge a Gunther chop. Mm -hmm. yep. And he'll chop back, dodges another one. He's got all this heart. But then, number three, it's the cutoff. It's arguably my favorite bit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's like, well, usually like it would be a heel cheating. Yes. But in this instance, it's the heel. What's the heel story here? I'm more powerful than mm -hmm. you. 
So Sammy goes for a springboard off the ropes. Gunther just catches him. German suplex. Mm-hmm. You know, ah, so as a crowd experiencing that, you're like, oh, but I was, I wanted the baby face to win. Mm-hmm. But you're going to have to work for it. Uh, then you get the heat, point four. And this is when Gunther keeps telling Sammy to get up. He looks over at Sammy's wife mm-hmm. in the crowd, Mrs. Zane. This guy. Mm-hmm. Not so great, is he? Yep. Um, and then you get a hope spot. Mm-hmm. That's number five. And that's where Sammy came back with a few chops. And this is where, because I've never done this with a, a match before, I thought it's not really following the structure, though. But it's because you those one through four, that's like, that happens. Mm-hmm. And then six and seven, which is the comeback and the finish, mm-hmm. that mostly is the same as well. But the middle... <coughs> The middle section just jumps back between cut off, heat, hope, cut off, heat, hope, cut off, heat, hope. And you're like, oh, I, I didn't, I've never really realized that's how it went. And yeah, it three times you go through this cycle, even though when I watched it first, because I've watched this match twice now, I thought, oh, they're just back and forth, back and forth. Mm-hmm. But you watch it back, they go through three clear hope, cut off, heat spots, like cycles, three times each one getting progressively higher and more intense. And you can feel the crowd getting more invested. Mm-hmm. So then when you get the final section of heat, which is Gunther, huge lariat cut off, mm-hmm. the referee's checking on him, and he does that power bomb, mm-hmm. splash, yep. slow walk up to the top of rope, another splash. Mm-hmm. That's when you get the comeback. Yeah. And that's Sammy fires up. He hits a brain buster oh. on the the top rope that brain buster <coughs> i lost my mind an old generico it, move right i absolutely lost my mind whips gunther into the turnbuckle runs over haluva kick to the back of the head another haluva kick to the front and then the finish sammy just lays on him yep and gets like actually a relatively weak pin one yeah. arm yeah it's just exhaustion mm-hmm. one arm over one two three and samantha irvin irvine when she does the mm-hmm. The thing you can hear her choking up when she announces Sammy as the IC champion. Yeah. So sorry for my homework there, but I just thought it was so interesting. And you can do that. You can have that level of intelligence to annoy all your friends with by going over to masterclass.com. Links in the video description below to sign up to that course now. Yeah. You can talk now. Um, <laughs> I love the Brain Buster so much uh, because I saw him, because uh, Gunther went up to the top rope again to hit a third splash mm. and he was getting a bit arrogant, right? Sammy came in and hit a halluva kick while Gunther was kind of uh, like crouching on, on the top rope and then got him in a suplex position. I was like, okay, superplex. Makes sense. Yeah. And then he got him up and I was like, that's vertical for a superplex. Oh, God! <laughs> As he came out with a brain buster. Like, I didn't put two and two together. Did he slip? <laughs> yeah, and, and, until he hit it. I was like, oh, my God! Because Gunther's a big man mm. and hitting that sort of brain buster on a guy that big, I was like, oh, I absolutely lost my mind. And I, I, I le- legitimately just stood up. Like, I had my laptop on my lap making notes for this. And I just put it to the side and stood up and went, Come on, Sammy! Let's go! Like, that level of investment. I oh, I love this match so much. I love Sammy Zayn. I'm so happy he won. I know I wanted it to be Chad Gable at one point, but I don't care anymore. Sammy's my guy. Well, now we can hopefully get heel Chad Gable. Maybe. Or, or whatever brute they plan. Like, yeah. you know, Chad well, said, thing. you owe me a favor. And that's the thing. He can Chad Gable can lose to Sami Zayn, right? Chad's story has always been about beating Gunther, right? Mm. Which can still happen when Gunther's world champion and Chad can beat him for the world <laughs> title. It's going to be great. Well, yeah. that, that you know that is probably where Gunther's destined for now. He's proven mm-hmm. himself on the IC mid card workhorse belt. I really Two years hope, as champion. Really hope that Gunther loses upwards now, loses the belt, moves on to bigger and better things. Bash at Berlin, couple it's of months. Be gotta be right yeah triple h is a smart guy yeah and we're in yeah. his era so yeah overall i gave this show 90 percent oh, that's high i'm all about positivity in wrestling sure you are but i enjoyed the show what more can i say yeah. I, you know what that is great i'm really glad you liked it i wouldn't rate it that highly personally i re- i enjoyed the opener i liked gunther and Sami Zayn, and i liked the main event the middle of the show to me was <sighs> yeah i think the only bad quote-unquote match was the Jey Uso Jimmy Uso match the rest were fine and the the opener and the the last two matches were really really good for me this is like a above average show yeah this is like a three and a half out of five I would say which would be a 70 percent uh, yeah sure about that 
Well, let's get into your remaining Ultra Chats. Uh, we read out every single one over five US dollars, so please do go over to wrestletalk.com forward slash support. Get those in. Remember to check out our sponsor, Wrestle WrestlingMasterclass.com. Links in the video description below. Stephen PD101 says, not gonna lie, kind of hated the main event. Mm -hmm. Half the match was boring as swear word. The other half was chaos. What were the rules? Whole thing felt like The Rock just jerking himself off. I like heel rock, but I hated this fluff fest. I think you didn't need the rules because Rock had that spot of threatening to fire the ref. The ref was like, I mean, I want to end the match, but I can't do anything. I'm sorry. You know, he apologized to Cody Rhodes. That was the thing was they could just do what they wanted. Mm. That was the rules was there were no rules, which does bring me to a point, though. The babyfaces won this match. What's to stop the Rock doing the same thing tomorrow anyway? Exactly. So what was the point of the... The well, now it can be more explicit. Now you you open up. Rock can just become the referee. Sure, yeah. Unknown's been a member for thirty one months in a row. Thank you very much. Thoroughly enjoyed night one. Rock showed that he can still do a long match. Was pleasantly surprised. Night two main event is going to be memorable. A hundred percent. It's certainly going to be memorable. One way or the other, <coughs> this thing's going to be memorable. Do you remember when we all said this last year? Well, that's the thing. I, I wrote in my notes again for this time. I was like, this build has been fantastic. They just need to stick the landing. <laughs> and that's exactly what I said last year. Mayor of Painesville, Dan. It's Dan. Hi, Dan. Hello, Pete. Hello, Ollie. I hope you are doing well. I'm kind of shocked still that Gunther lost the title. I really thought Ilya is taking the title from him, just like he did in NXT and WXW. Plus, isn't it awesome? Two roads win a world title soon. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny, Dan. Um... Not everything can be booked around what you like from <laughs> WXW, Dan. I think Gunther's going to be just fine. It sounds like Dragunov isn't getting called up anytime soon. Either. No. And if he does, Gunther will be world champ for like 10 years. So it's fine. <laughs> uh, this one was missed from last night. C. Deaton loved how they ended the show with the same camera shot as last year with Cody crying in the ring like that. Yep. Gunther Sammy was match of the night, but I still wish it was Gable's moment. Yeah, I do I do want more for Gable still. I, I love the match and I love Sammy Zayn, but I do want more for Gable. Ket, never been a fan of Gunther. Wow. At best, he's an average wrestler to me. However, last night was his best performance ever. I enjoyed the work he put in. Love that Sammy won. Hope he has a good reign as IC champ. Uh, great. I'm really glad you enjoyed the match. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, maybe go back and watch other Gunther matches now mm. you've maybe gotten an in mm. on, on what you like about him. Yeah. King Cavill, thank you very much for your generous pledge or donation there. I don't know how people reacted to Sami Zayn beating Gunther, but I loved it. They told a perfect story, and those two might just be the best heel and face in wrestling. Plus, Gunther's reign being 666 days rules. So good. I wonder when they worked that out. To be like, I wonder if they said, well, we'll have him lose at Mania, whatever. That'll be fine. Or they said, when's 666 days? It's on Mania? That's the date. <laughs> if it's anything like us, they probably realize that they have the show. Yeah. Probably. Geek of Arabia. Gunther versus Sammy was hands down the best match on night one. We got Dueling Chance. It's been too damn long since I've seen right proper Dueling Chance. Mm. I loved it. Yep. So good. Jordan Cherry. I know he just won a title, but what do you guys think Sammy should do in Toronto? As a Canadian going to Money in the Bank, I think he should win the World Heavyweight Championship for the pop he should have got in Montreal. Great work and thanks for the streams. That's interesting. I believe that actually this coming raw on monday is in montreal mm. um which will be oh, great which will be cool for sammy um i don't know i think sammy have him do a proper ic title run and to him that belt is the top belt on raw yeah or wherever it ends mm -hmm. up um because i think there's too much of there's too much good stuff to tell with drew mcintyre cm punk seth rollins yeah Rhea versus Becky on the subject of this anonymous maybe i was being uh, a bit too fanboy but with their stardom i felt Rhea versus Lynch could have been a generational match. I'm a bit bummed it wasn't. Also, my normie cousin is emotionless, is a, is a emotionless in white fan. Saw Rhea's entrance and has not stopped gushing over her. That's the band right. that played. I see. Yes, um, that's valid. Um, and yeah, I, I agree. I think I had higher expectations for the Rhea Becky match myself. It was still a great match, mm. but I think I expected it to be match of the year, incredible, and it didn't quite reach that level. Matt Hennessy says, WrestleMania 40 was a good show, a solid four out of five show, at least night one 
was, We shall see what Night 2 presents. Outside of Jimmy vs. Jay, I thought all the other matches were good to great. Honestly, Sami Zayn has been, in my opinion, the biggest success story of the Triple H era. From ending the longest tag title reign last year in the WrestleMania main to ending the longest IC title reign this year. Uh, Sami Zayn, in my opinion, is the best babyface in wrestling. Sorry, Cody. Sorry, Will. I loved six of the seven matches. The Usos match sucked. And while I really enjoyed the tag title ladder match and expected Awesome Truth to get the Raw title, why give the SmackDown tag titles to Theory and Waller? DIY or, or British Strong Style should have won those. I agree. <coughs> I, I don't get to say this because I don't review SmackDown or Raw. Mm -hmm. Birmingham. What a name. It's fantastic. I love it. Sky Shadow Run. I hate being so negative. <laughs> it's a great way to start a chat. Love that. But I think if we didn't have Night 2 to go, that would have been a forgettable mania. I agree. Yeah. But it's but, not. <laughs> but the matches were all good. Some were great, but it never felt biggest WrestleMania compared to last year. Even the stage felt just fine to me. I do agree on the stage. I think it is an okay stage, and it could have been a bit more. To, uh, sorry, to, to me, it's like Across the Spider-Verse. Mm-hmm. I... Th when the second part of that is out, I will probably enjoy that more than Into the Spider-Verse. That's crazy. Uh, it, I don't know what's better out of Into and Across. They're great. They're, so they're both fantastic. But this is very much a part one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, th I think it's really hard to review a night one because it is so, it's like reviewing Infinity War, mm -hmm. right? It is so intrinsically tied to Endgame, right? Infinity War is a fantastic movie. Arguably one of my favorites. But... It is very much a part one. You know, this feels the same. Low B. I thought this show was great. Jay versus Jimmy was a stinker, which is unfortunate, but everything else ranged from very fun to legitimately incredible. This show is a four to four and a half stars for me. Nice. Jake WTW, other than Rhea, Becky, Sammy Gunther, and the last 10 minutes of the main event, I felt this show was very lacklustre. The ladder match was okay, Jay Jimmy didn't have the drama it should have, and the trio's match outside of the entrance felt like a raw match. Proper three out of five show for me. Hopefully night two is better. I think that's the closest <laughs> uh, ultra chat that I agree with so far. Mm. I think that's, that's pretty much spot on to how I feel. Kazoo was there last night. Was extremely cold. Had a great time. Crowd was loud, but the stadium and cold didn't get it across well. All the matches were good, except the Usos, sadly. Main event did not feel like 45 minutes at all. Was shocked at the time. Crazy. Mm. Very much felt like 45 minutes to me. And uh, we've got two more here. Meet Normus. Here's a small sack of monies for my favourite British grannies. Grannies. I rescind my thumbs up. Tonight's main event will be an overbooked car crash, and I'm here for it. Meet forever. Absolutely. And finally for now, Tracy WV88, member for seven months in a row. Love Sammy and Gunther. I cried when Sammy won. Becky had a 102 degree fever, but what's the real feel, Pete? <laughs> So I think that affected the match. That's a good point, actually. That's Becky a good point. was ill uh, either the night before or several days before. Yeah, they said for like the week leading up to, basically. Great night one. Can't wait for tonight. I am very excited for tonight. Can we have a look at the final poll to see what the overall we consensus certainly was? certainly can. It, it's it's uh, some results. 72% <laughs> thumbs up. Wow. I don't know about the rest because I can't see them without going over there you can go over there okay I'll, I'll go I'll over there the time i'll talk about our sponsor masterclass.com click the video uh, click the video link click the link in the video description below to go over to masterclass.com and you can check out all the modules let me read some of the modules here for you we have becoming a wrestler becoming a promoter becoming a booker wrestling psychology parts one and two other on-screen talent like referee commentator ring announcer or manager uh the results of the poll 70 Damn it. 72% thumbs up. Oh, we've got it here. Mid 24%. 24%. Thumbs down 2%. I think that's fair. So no one's saying this is a bad show. No. All they're saying is it's a mid show. Yeah. I think it being promoted as the great biggest WrestleMania. Blah, blah, blah. I think it's not reached those expectations yet. We have a night two yet to come. Um, but I think it is a good show. Yeah. Overall, above average. Well, go and subscribe to the WrestleTalk channel because Luke and Sati Miyangi will be there this evening for the Night 2 live reactions. But for now, I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Pete Quinnell. Jam that jam. <laughs>